right. So maybe you want to take the arms nice and wide to achieve you have space in the home studio, being open through the heart chakra. Or maybe it felt good to keep a hand on the heart and hand on the belly. Your choice. Are you open to receive today? If so, take the arms wide. Or if you need a bit more grounding, maybe keep a hand on the heart. This is your practice. Everything that I offer is more of a suggestion. So listen to your body. Can you tune into your own intuition? So throughout practice, if there's a posture that doesn't suit you, change it up. I'll offer modification when I can. And this is vinyasa. So if there's times where you're being drawn to move your body in a different way, listen to that message. Let's take a big inhale through the nose. And exhale out. Whether it's through the mouth or through the nose, your choice is going to be audible. Or if you want to build a bit of internal heat, your choice. You choose breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then maybe change the breath to the opposite of what you're just doing. So maybe join me for Ujjayi breath now into the nose. Back up through the nose. Feeling that closing of the larynx. And take both arms overhead. Interlace your hands, flip the palms. Arch in the spine. Start to make some space between the low back and the neck. And on your exhale, float the hands down towards your pubic bone, draw knee into your chest, and lift the head off the mat, nose towards you. When you go back to the earth, reach overhead, arch in the spine, really press through your shoulder blades. And then draw the other knee into your chest as you interlace the hands, lift the head off the mat, nose Move through that a few more times. Filling up, waking up the spine. Moving from leg to leg. But pausing when you take the arms overhead. Little wake up through the core as we draw the thigh into our chest, waking on our diet, waking up our digestion system, thinking of it as a little detox. One more of each leg. Or be mindful what leg you started on, maybe where I just came back. We're on the opposite leg. Now you can hug both knees into your chest. Start to rock side to side, giving the sacred a little massage. And getting out of that comfort zone if you can. Not allowing yourself or reminding yourself, I should say, that your practice doesn't have to be perfect. So this next posture, <laughs> if we were to video ourselves, we might have a little chuckle. We're gonna bring our hands behind our head, lifting your head off again. Pedal through your legs like you are riding a bike. And then I want you to back pedal and just allow it to go a little crazy. Wake up the core, wake up the hips. Not having to be consumed what this looks like. Allow those legs to wake up. Allow the hips to wake up and don't forget to draw your navel to your spine. That's going to protect your back. Okay, pedal it forward again. Maybe exhale out. I know this is very challenging, especially in the morning practice. Then I want you to keep one knee bent, take the other leg up to the sky, and start to circle through that hip on its own. Still keeping the spine on the mat. And then bend that knee, let's switch legs. Other leg goes long, circle through the hip, big circles with the leg. And 
And then bring the knee back to center. Come into your full bicycles. Opposite elbow to opposite knee. And switch. And switch. And switch. Keep moving through that. Switch. 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 For five, four, three, two, and one. Take a pause, join your knees to your chest. Oh, sigh out. Because <laughs> I can't hear your grunts. I want them to be extra loud as if you're trying to go past that camera right now. And don't forget to reconnect with your breath. Finding our sukha and our stira. So we build that fire, we build some heat, find some stillness again. Take your arms out wide to a T and allow your knees to drop to one side. Find supine twist. Shoulder blades can stay on the earth. We're going to pause here for a little longer. Breathe into the side of your ribs. And then bring your knees to the other side. Beautiful. Can you keep the shoulder blades on the earth here? Remember at the beginning of practice, I asked you to open up through the heart if you felt like going there today. So instead of rolling to one side, press that shoulder blade, feel this connection across the collarbone. Breathe into those intercostal muscles between the ribs. Lose your power of thought to direct your breath to the side of the body. Energy flows where our attention goes. So if something is speaking to you today on a physical level, Send your breath there. Now we'll bring your knees back to center, float them up in towards your chest. Knees wide into your baby folds. Hands on top of your knees or your shins. And then just start to rock a little side to side. Being gentle with the sacrum here. Hands on top of your kneecaps, circle through those hips again. You want to make sure we're nice and warmed up. I like to think of this as warming up the car before we get ready right to our vinyasa. And then take both legs up to the sky, the vibrita, and point in your toes, hands behind your head. You lower the legs down. We're going to do 10 rounds of this. So at your own pace, lower the legs, tap the heels, and exhale back up. Lower down and exhale up. Draw the navel to spine, lower and lift. Don't forget to protect your low back. Exhale on the way up. Should be at six. Lower it back down. Lift for seven. Lower it down. 
Lift for eight, lower down. Lift for nine, and lower. Last one, lift for 10. Lower back down, hover your heels. Keep lifting your head. Crisscross the legs. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Knees into your chest. <sighs> You're holding your breath. Take a big sigh out. If it's part of your practice, start to rock forward and back on your spine, or you're going to roll to one side. And then we meet at the center of our mat, raise the boss number pose, chest lifted. Toes can be pointed or feet can be flexed. Maybe you want to extend the legs long, you have tight hamstrings, keep the knees bent, join me there. Chest lifts, so lift your sternum like there's a straight on the left of the sky. Arms extend, six reps. Big exhale out. Cross your ankles, plant your hands, set yourself right into your plank. Option to lower to the knees. Find your first chatter on Bend to out. Lower the control first, all the way to the earth. Contact your toes. Lift your heart. Big cobra. Press back. The last one, child's pose. So take this time of rest. And maybe this is going to be your favorite pose today. Maybe this is a pose you're going to revisit throughout your practice. Hold here for about four more breaths. As our practice has already been a lot of physical, don't forget to set your intention. One more breath in Balasana, child's pose. Okay, we will roll up to the table. Landing through our palms. Think of that L shape of your hand. Press through your thumb and your index. Keep between your thighs and you can see your big toe and bring them directly behind your thighs. Move through your cat and cow. Lift in your heart, arching the back. Round through your spine, tucking your chin. Inhale, lift your heart, drop the belly. Exhale, out. Inhale, lift you through the heart. And exhale, out. Move through that intuitively. So go at your own pace. Go at your own rhythm. I like to think of our practice as a song. So time we're going to pick up the beat. Time to slow it down. So this part of the practice is for you. You get to determine what pace you want to go at. And then maybe it's playing with rocking the hips side to side. Or rolling the body forward, losing it's a little bit of weight over the top of the wrist to make up the forearms so that feels good. Or maybe you want to work in the shoulders and be one down to the opposite wrist and then pressing up, rolling that shoulder forward to the opposite wrist and pressing up. So, your choice how do you want to move right now? Maybe it's figure eight with the hips. Or maybe it's even pressing into the fingertips. Play with it. There's no right or wrong as long as your body is welcoming it and feels safe. Taking two more breaths. And 
Then we'll all meet back in our table. Neutralize the spine, tuck your pivot bone to your chin. Then tuck your toes and send your sit bones up to the sky for your first hour to stop. Adamukanasana. Root through your heels. They may not touch the earth, but try to direct them. A little no head from side to side between the biceps. Rock that head. And if you find that you are slipping in this pose, I'd rather you step the feet wider or step the feet towards your wrists instead of readjusting the hands. You want to make sure the hands are directly under your shoulders like the word table. Take one or wrap them down up. Round your spine, draw your navel in, come high onto the balls of the feet, and then come forward into plank. Lower your knees to tabletop. Find your cow pose, lift your heart out to the spine. Keep the toes tucked around to your spine, coming into cat, and then press back to down dog. We're going to move through that a couple more times. Forward into high plank, pause. Lower the knees, lift your heart, cow pose. Round your spine hot and then press back to down dog. One more as a group, four into high plank pause. Lower your knees, lift your heart, find cow. Round your spine hat. Press back to down dog. You can move through that one more time if you like, or if you need to rest, come into child. Getting already a little heated in here, so I have to shut my feet off. I can already feel that fire coming in. And then once you've completed that round, you're going to meet back in child's down dog or tabletop, your choice of rest. All right, let's flow. Lift your left leg up to the sky, whether you're in table or in your down dog, and step your left foot forward. Bend into your back knee. You can keep the knee down for a modified lunge or keep the knee lifted from all the way up to crescent. Sink into your crescent, bring your palms to prayer, knee above your ankle. And then think of that pubic bone tucking forward again, so you're engaging the low back. Back heel is lifted. Sit a little lower into crescent, our favorites. Slide it out or exhale through the nose. Check to make sure you can still see your big toe. If you can't, you're leaning too far forward. So draw that knee back. One more breath. Exhale, hands down. Step it back to your plank or your table. Switch legs, opposite foot steps forward. Bend your knee, you're lifting up to full crescent or option to keep that knee down. Beautiful. Love the variations on the screen. Sink right back into crescent. Shoulders back. Do all of those little cues I just gave you. Pivot bone forward, knee above your ankle, check for your big toe. If that big toe wants to lift off, press through the three corners of your feet. Sink a little lower, you got it. Exhale, hands to the earth. Set yourself back into your plank. Modify vinyasa, lower to your knees. Modify plank here, chaturanga. Lower down first, keep hands on your shoulders, lift your heart, baby cobra. Gliding back, down dog. We're not gonna go right into cobra, that's how we can create injury. You can think that we're warmed up, but then putting that compression on the low spine can create injury later on. Okay, let's slow again. Left leg lifts and steps in top of your mat. Repeating one. Bend into your knee. Inhale. Lift up to crescent. Exhale. Find your edge. Sink into your crescent. This time, glue your thumbs to your sternum. Stay here, or maybe you want to add a bit of a heart on your back bend. Lift your heart to the sky. Front knee stays strong. Start to feel length in your right quad. Lift your heart back up. Exhale, hands to earth. Step it back to plank. Transition to the other side. Right foot forward. Bend the chin. 
Lift yourself up. Find Crescent. Exhale, sink into it. Palms together. Line up with the heart and then start to lift that heart. You find a nice long stretch through your quad here. Remember at the beginning of practice, I'm reminding you to send your quad onto spaces that need it. So maybe that's the space right now. And you're back. Lift your heart to center. Exhale, hands down. Step it back to plank. One more modified flow together. Lower your knees. Untuck your toes. Lead your heart forward, chaturanga. Keep your elbows in towards your rear. Lift your heart. Baby cobra. Glide back. Down. One more round. Left foot steps forward. Bend to your knee. You're going to love crescent by the end of today. Inhale, lift back. Exhale, sink into crescent. Inhale, take the arms long this time. Lift your heart. And picture those palms like you're holding a beach ball overhead. Lift your heart to center. Step your back foot on an angle. Come right into here, the folks. The back foot might come on a 45 degree angle. Your right hip slightly kicks more forward. Option to use your yoga blocks here. Or make a tent with your hand. Nose towards your knee, your chest to thigh. Think about if someone was to come around, they're going to press your right hip forward and draw your left hip back. So you're finding more length, more space in the back of your left hamstrings or whatever leg is forward. Hang up your pyramid. Take two more breaths. Walk your hands forward, bend into your front knee, pick up your back foot and step it longer to the short edge of your mat. Right hand stays to the inside of your foot, left arm reaches in your twist. Get tall on your back heel, lift a little longer through the back of those hamstrings. A nice, beautiful twist, chest to thigh, and you start to feel that into your left glute, maybe even to the low back. One more breath. Excellent, hands earth. Step it back to your plank. Take your vinyasa, whether it's from the knees or from the toes, forward into your chaturanga. Bend into your elbow. Lower with control. Lay the feet, then lift up baby cobra or full cobra. Listen to your spine. Shoulder to the back. Lie back, down dog. All right, let's move to the right side. Right leg lifts, step between your hands. Bend to your knee, lift up. Find your crescent. Take your time. Exhale, sink into that leg. Inhale, arms back up, lift your heart. Nice and active through those arms again. Spread through the fingers. Relax the shoulders into their socket. Lift your sternum to center. And then exhale, pick up that back leg. Step it on that angle. That's your power today. Lengthen into your front leg, fine pyramid. Nose towards your knee again. And then check in with your back foot. Maybe you need to send it more forward. Right foot presses more back. Finding that length through the back of your right hand swings here. Try not to overextend your lock thing. Remember, blocks are great to bring your mat closer to you. So if there's stress on the palms here or stress on your knee, use your blocks. Of course, mine will be all the way over there. <laughs> But take your time to do so. Finding that bit of compression, belly to thigh, should feel soothing. Breathe into that breath. Okay. 
Two more breaths. Bend into your knee, walk your hands forward, step your back foot long. Left hand stays the earth, right arm reaches in your twists, shoulders aligned. So try not to reach all the way behind you. I know it might feel good, but stack your shoulders. Reach to your fingertips. Every exhale, you're bringing your chest closer to the inner thigh. One more breath. Nice. Exhale, hand down. Step it back to your plank. Take your vinyasa from the knees or from the plank. Forward in the high plank if you're joining me. Chaturanga. Lower down. Lift up. Baby cobra or full cobra. Shoulders roll back. Think of someone guiding their shoulders back for you. Press back to child's pose or down dog. Your choice. So stay in your rest, wherever you landed. See if you can change up the breath, slow it down. You just build a bunch of fire, a bunch of heat. Maybe you need to change the breath. If you are exhaling out of the mouth with me, try to change it to ujjayi breath and out of the nose. And I invite you to give yourself a compliment or remind yourself of an affirmation. Sometimes we need a friend to give us permission to speak up about ourselves, to speak kindly to ourselves. So as your friend right now, what is that reminder that you need? You are beautiful, you are strong, and you take care of yourself. For any other reminders you need to bring forth on your mat, please do so. If you need to stay longer, on or left. If you're ready to move, we'll roll back up to table and then step up to the top of our mat. Find your forward fold. Heels hold your feet a little wider, so they're about hip width distance. Bend into your knees, allow your belly to make contact with your thighs. And I purposely use that word belly. It's there to support you, it's there to keep you lifted. So breathe into the belly. Feel that connection to your thighs, it's beautiful. And then exhale, draw the knee on the spine. Inhale, fill up. And exhale, draw it into your side. One more that. Inhale, fill up, belly connects your thighs. And exhale. I'm going to keep the left knee bent, left hand on the earth or on your yoga block. Right arm reaches up to the sky, right hand string is nice and long. So again, as someone's drawing that hip up to the sky, you're going to get more length and height through your hamstrings. Look up if you can, in your rotation. And then exhale, lower your hand down, bend your knee, reset with a half of your inhale, hands to shins, heart of Utmasana. Exhale, forward fold, Utmasana. Move your block in front of the right foot. Right hand stays on the block, right knee bends. Left arm reaches up. Feel the ends of some dry those hamstrings, drawing that hip up to the sky. The left foot is going to stay on the ground though. And then exhale, lower your hand down. Inhale, half a lift. Exhale, forward fold. Sit low here to find your chair. Maybe you want to place that block between your thighs, or maybe you want to use the block as some weight. So sit low, get your arms up. Finding your Utkasana, chest lifted, 
navel draws through the spine. So a little lower, press through your big toe, your baby toe and your heel. Lift all the way up to stand. Legs are strong. Lift through your heart. Find a little back bend. Slide out of your knee. Lift your heart back to center. Sit into the cross because it's your favorite. Sit a little lower if you have it. One more. Lift all the way back up. Lift your heart. Find your back bend. Last time, exhale, sit right into it. Remove the block, and then see if you can bring your hands to prayer. Leaning forward, twist to the right, find prayer twist. Hooking your elbow on the outside of your thigh. Line up your thumb with the middle of your sternum, look over your shoulder. And then notice that the knees, try not to splay them out, keep them aligned, like you're holding that block there. We'll place the block there if you want that extra challenge. One more breath. Look to the top of your mat. Get tall. Come all the way up to stand. Inhale. Exhale. Sit right into it. Hands to prayer. Lean forward. Twist over to the left. Hook your elbow on the outside. Press your palms together. Line up the thumbs again. The more that you line up the thumbs with the sternum, the more space you're getting shoulders. One more breath here. Look to the top of your mat. Get top in, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Find yourself to the posture for a moment. Maybe it's a hand to the heart. Feeling the heartbeat. Calming your breath down. Let's be back into our chair pose. Inhale, arms out, sit into chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Swing the scarf, B, step yourself back into your plank. Take your vinyasa, Chaturanga. Lift up, find your upper pose, cool breath, or maybe up dog. Pause there. Nice, glide back. Down low. Leading with that left foot, left foot steps forward. Right foot steps on that angle. Keep your front knee bent, weight into front leg. Inhale, arms up. Find your adjustment A. Exhale, hands and come to prayer. Let's give the upper body rest. Think of that energy coming up from the pubic bone to your crown. Squeezing in the Ladara. So think of when you really, really have to go to the bathroom. Squeeze everything up and in. Sit a little lower for the legs. Think of your crescent here. You can't see your big toe driving the back of that. And exhale, hands here. Step yourself back into plank or down dog. If you want to rest in down dog, you're welcome to stay there. Chaturanga. Then find your cobra. Gliding back. Down dog. Right side. Right foot steps between the hands. Back left foot steps closer. Inhale, lift up. Find your dressing A. Exhale, hands to her. Nice. Take your time, I'm going too quick. <laughs> Just checking in with everybody online. I tell you to slow down and then I pick it up for some reason. <laughs> ah. Sink into the legs again and then draw the energy up all the way to the ground. Maybe you want to take your arms open. Focus in on your heart. Exhale, hands down. Step yourself back to plank. Your choice to move through your vinyasa or hang out, excuse me, with downward dog with me. Exhale. 
All right, lead with your left leg again. So your left foot between your hands. Bend into your back knee, windmill your arms up, land in your jaw spin. Coming into our warrior sequence, your back right foot is aligned with the short of your mat. Your front heel is aligned with your back arch. Bend into that knee. Arms extend up to the top of your mat, be nice and proud in the warrior. Roll your shoulders back. Sink a little further through the legs. And then take your back right hand, wrap it around the spine to the front pocket. Then lift that left arm up, finding your exalted. Lifting through the torso, come back to center. The left hand is going to hug the belly or reach towards the right hip. The right arm is going to extend, siding the pulse. Roll through your top shoulder. A little variation in our side angle today. Usually, I would suggest bringing the forearm to thigh. But can you trust the core to keep you lifted? One more breath here. Inhale, lift yourself to center. Exhale, lengthen your front leg. Put the palms. Reach to the top of your mat, find Trikonasana triangle pose. Your hand can rest to the inside of your ankle or your calf and get tall through that top finger. Stacking through your shoulders, lift off of that front arm. Look to the top of your mat, bend into your knee, find your dress. Excellent hands to hips. Pivot the front set of toes. Pivot the back set of toes. We're just changing directions. Heel to arch line, front knee set. Roll the shoulders back again and look to the top of your mat. So a little lower into your thrust knee. And then now let's take the back hand, left hand to the front pocket. Right arm reaches up to the step. Inhale, lift to center. Right hand's gonna come to left hip, exit. Reach over that front leg. Rolling that shoulder back. Softening your jaw. Power up to your core. Inhale, lift to center. Lengthen that leg. Reach forward, find your tree can Find length of the side of the body, breathe into those spaces. And try to take your weight off your front leg. Use your core to lift you up. Think of that magnet glued to the middle finger, drawing you up to the sky. Look to the top of your mat, bend and chain. Land your dressing knee. Exhale, hands to hips, pivot those set of toes, find the line for you. So in your inversion, allow the head to be heavy. Play around with transfer your weight forward from back. Into the toes, back into the heels. And then find your sweet spot where you feel strong and stable and then stay right there. Inhale, get a little taller, happy your lip. Exhale, forward fold. Let's walk the hands back to the top of our mat. Change the direction of the foot. So left foot's gonna pivot, right heel's gonna lift. So you can lift off, finding your standing splits. So left foot is forward, right leg is lifted. Square your hip to the top corner, and draw your knee into spot. Hanging out your knee, grabbing hold of your calf or your ankle.
And on your exhale, you're gonna bend your front knee, step your back foot down, lift up, find crescent, pivot on your foot, land in your jaw knee. Change directions, left side of toes, and right side of toes. Bend into your front knee, come on off the back heel, and slowly. So just changing directions of your back, lift your back, left leg up. So right foot should be forward now. Square your hip, left hip rotates top corner. And are you grabbing a hold of your ankle or your calf? Maybe you're bringing your nose towards your knee, or maybe you're not. One more back here. And exhale, you're going to lower that foot down, bend your knee, lift up to crescent. Exhale, step up to the top of your mat, or I should say the back of your mat. Awesome. And open up the eyes. Change the upper direction again. So you have the new front of the room, the back of your mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, find your fourth foot. Inhale, half a lift. And exhale, hold. Step back with your right foot. Take the hands across the long edge of your mat. Change directions. Plant the hands and step yourself back into your plank. Find your chaturanga. Should be back in the front of the room. Lift your heart. Find cobra. We lost ladies. Join us here. Tuck your toes. Press back down. Back. Step your left foot forward. Lift your back right leg off like we just did in standing splits. Keep the front leg bent. Hands come to prayer. Maybe challenge yourself to stay here or see if you can lift up to your Yasana seat. So you're getting taller. Arms extend out to airplane. Flex your back foot. Front heel is down. Keep pulling the navel to spine, protect the low back. And then step up to the top of your mat. Pause in some T. I promise this is the last challenging part. We're just gonna get the other side of the road. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to the earth. Keep the hands on the earth. We're gonna float the opposite leg off. You should be your left leg this time. Lifting up, find your dress mat. Here's your asana seat. Navel pulls aside. So right leg forward, left leg lifted, or if that feels uncomfortable or awkward, maybe you're on the other side. Balance something on your spine here. Front leg might have some shakes and quakes, that's okay. One more round. And then land in your forward fold or step up to the top of your mat, some seat. Mountain pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half a lift. And exhale, fold. Make your way back into down dog, planting the hips. Starting on the left side again, lifting your left leg. Bring left knee to the inside of your wrist for Ikapada Kanasana, your pigeon pose. So left knee inside of left wrist. You can always do this from tabletop and slide into forward, or you can come onto your spine. I'll show you. Coming into a big figure four by right? crossing the ankle and interlacing the hands behind your back. If you're joining me, the pigeon, left knee to the inside of the left, left wrist, heel above your groin, and the back right hip presses forward. 
trading the chest over your front leg, coming on to forearms, blocks, or maybe all the way down. You think of it, someone is pressing your right hip forward if you're in that pigeon pose, and your left hip is drawing back. If you're in figure four or reclined pigeon, your choice if you want the leg extended to the sky or the knee bent. Take one more breath here. If you're on your spine, you can stay there and cross the legs. If you're in pigeon, you're going to press yourself up, tap your toes, lift the knee, and sweep that left leg back, and lower it back into your down dog. Transitioning to the other side. So right knee is going to come with the inside of right wrist. Option to move from down dog or from table. And if you're on your spine, press the opposite leg forward. Untuck the toes at back leg. Press your left hip forward in pigeon and allowing the weight to come over top of the front leg. Again, recline pigeon. Grip is behind the thigh. And your choice if the leg is extended or bent, usually you'll find more, more sensation with the knee bent. Soften your jaw. Bring the tongue to the roof of your mouth. Taking one more breath here. If you're on your spine, you can stay there. We'll be there in a second. If you're in pigeon, you're going to tuck the toes, lift the knee, sweep your right leg back to your three legged dog, and maybe take a pause and down the dog for one more time. And then we will all make our way to our side. And once you get there, if you want to add any layers on, you're welcome to. If you're ready for Shavasana, feel free to come right into that rest or join me for shoulder stance. We're going to take our legs up to the sky and we breathe up. Hands are going to come underneath the low back. Palms are supporting the spine. See if you can lift the sit bones off the mat. Head and neck is neutral. Try not to look at the camera. Try to listen to my cues. Want to keep your head centered. 
Legs are up to the sky, hands are supporting the spine. And see if you can tuck your elbows in towards each other. If you weren't able to bring the sit bones off, that's okay. You can also just hang out the legs lifted. Legs long up to the sky. Having this inversion here, allowing everything to drain. Finding that stretch through the back of the neck to the shoulders. And then either staying here or joining me in cloud pose, bending the knees, bringing the feet over head. And allow them just to hang out if they don't reach the floor. Try not to force anything. If you're in cloud pose, bring the knees to the forehead. Try not to roll up out of this. Slowly roll the spine back to the earth. Pause with the feet planted. And then take the sole of the feet together and knees wide to bound the ankle or butterfly pose. Reset the shoulder blades into the mat. Maybe take the arms open to the teeth. Find stillness again. Closing the eyes and it feels soothing. Slowing down the breath. Be proud of your practice today. Proud of your work. For your last few breaths here, breathe in for five, four, three, two, one. Hold at the top. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Last time. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath at the top. Exhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Big release. Any final thoughts you wish to leave on your mat, please do so. And that compliment that you gave yourself, bring it back. Repeat it to yourself now.
I am loved, I am beautiful, I am worthy. And I practice my own self-care. If you have time to stay on your mat, please feel free to do so. If you're ready to move, you're gonna wiggle through your fingers and your toes. Maybe even roll through wrists and ankles. And then roll to a favorite side to close your practice. Take a moment to pause there. Bring your knees closer to your chest, thanking your body for its mobility, thanking your lungs for guiding you and for being healthy, and thanking your mind for stillness, even if it felt like it was just for a moment today. From that favorite side, slowly come to seated. Try not to press right up, take your time. And then once we land there, we'll bring our hands to our heart, bowing our head down. Moment of gratitude for this practice, gratitude for our community, and gratitude for our willingness to show up, even on those days where we really don't want to. Bringing our thumbs to third eye and to chakra for intuition to mouth and throat, the shudra for speaking our truth, and back to our heart space, anahata, for our kindness, practicing ahimsa, non-violence towards self, non-violence towards others. It was an honor to lead you through your practice this morning. Thank you for showing up from my heart to yours. Put a little love in your heart. Namaste.